Come in, pull up a chair. <clears throat> Apologies for um, the noise around. I don't know if it gets picked up by uh, the phone, but um, I'm running some tests right now. Um, I was going to do a video about the second version of um, my load slammer, my Jim Williams AM133 thing. Um, because as you can see it, it's done. I've actually made several and um, yeah, there's something wrong with, uh, I don't know what, what's going on, but they don't seem to work. Um, who knows? I am missing one part. I'm missing an LT1004. It's a voltage reference, a 2.5 volt voltage reference. And I substituted it with a Zener, which should do for, like, for in the meantime. But, um, yeah, it's not really behaving itself. I think you can even see one of the transistors gave up the ghost. So I'm not entirely sure what I did wrong. Um, I assembled them basically exactly the same as I did the last ones using a stencil. Uh, Everything seems correct, but yeah, I don't know what's going on. So, topic of today's video, which I hope I'm going to be able to keep um, reasonably short. Um, since version 1 of the Load Slammer works so well, I uh, decided to take one of my old uh, computers that I had lying around and um, do some brain surgery, uh, lobotomy, I don't know, I'm not a brain surgeon, um, so I decided to just take the thing and solder it onto the v-core of the um, power supply of this processor, so basically underneath the processor socket, it's an old AMD Athlon 2 or something, and um, do some measurements with that so show you basically a real-life application of what you might use this for because we talked about idealized situations last time and yeah those are fine and dandy but um, seeing it real life on an actual product is I think far more interesting and I will have a hopefully not too long rant about the single worst oscilloscope I have ever worked with but um, we'll burn that bridge definitively when we get there because um, what I'm about to say about that oscilloscope is probably never gonna um, land me a sponsorship from that company ever so let me move you around and show you the setup and then we can um, look at some waveforms and understand what's happening all right, give me a second. All right, so um, we have the subject under test, the uh, lobotomy patient, um, a power supply, a motherboard, CPU in the socket, and a fan. And <clears throat> it's actually working right now, it's running. Um, the CPU core voltage for this uh, processor in particular is about 1.45 volts or something like that. Uh, I can't be bothered to plug the multimeter in and show you that, but you'll have to believe me. I have to trust me. Um, so I just wired the power supply, uh, shorted the power pins together and uh, the the pins that go to the power switch together and it booted and yeah you can hear the fan spinning so it's working every voltage is turned on and it's got RAM in it and it's not got, it hasn't got a GPU or anything but it's a fully working computer well it's trying to post but it doesn't have anything to post from so um, it's basically the CPU is up and running and it's doing its thing. What you can see here, and I'm going to bring you in for a closer look, is the V1 of my uh, load slammer board. And um, 
um, it's soldered to basically the decoupling capacitors underneath the processor and it's soldered that so so that we have the minimum um, basically the minimum inductance parasitic conductance uh, so we can get the fastest transitions and I have another probe here which is basically non ideally probing the base the core voltage of the CPU why what I mean by non ideally well we have a bunch of switching regulators in this area around here and I have a giant loop and it's inducing loads of noise in the MF and stuff like that into the probe so ideally I'd have um, a very um, short uh, like coax as coaxial as possible uh, trace running to the probe like those spring clips that you clip on but they don't have them for this probe so um, by the way my rig all is gone it's gone to a new owner um, and I borrowed the, the worst scope in history from work so you know I can do stuff uh, while I'm waiting for things to develop um, <clears throat> And um, yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this, but a LaCroix is worse than a Rigol in user friendliness. Granted, it's an older LaCroix, but still. So, motherboard, uh, power supply. Um, you might notice that I actually have an electronic load, and this is a 30 amp, 150 volt, 200 watt siglant. Uh, I have quite a bit of siglant gear because, yeah. A signal generator up here you can't see it it's still a uh, siglant um, I've got a bunch of stuff from Electron, and um, I didn't get a bundle but I picked like the best bang for buck was the siglant stuff and you might notice that there's two Keithley's missing so uh, here there was a 236 under the 237 which has gone to a happy new owner and my 6500 is gone because I didn't need it having the 2001. I believe the 2001 is a superior multimeter compared to the, the 6500, although the 2001 isn't really a 7.5 digit multimeter, it's more of a 6.5-ish. It's better than 6.5, so it's a good 6.5. The 6500 was a bit too noisy and I don't like the touch screen and stuff like that. I prefer the 2001. Um, right, so I have everything um, here um, set up. Let me bring you in for a closer look to show you how I solder the things and then we can take a look at the so scope screen and um, see how we can torture this poor motherboard. All right, give me a few minutes to set things up. Right, so sorry about the shallow depth of field. Um, we have the board. I ripped a slice out of this, um, what do you call it? Um, backplate, the cooler's uh, backplate, and I soldered the, soldered the um, device entirely to the um, back of the CPU basically and let me sheesh, sorry you can see the decoupling capacitors and my soldering job um, I removed the heat sinks because they weren't really needed and you can see the loop of uh, like the points I'm measuring the voltage across so it's basically the width of this PCB is kind of perfect to fit on a 0603 size capacitor so one side is positive and the other side is negative negative. and yeah uh, board is running uh, power it's powered um, motherboard is also powered uh, signal generator is turned on let's look at the scope screen right now and see what's going on Right, so this is the only angle that I could find with minimal glare. Um, the more I think about the scope, the more I think that it's actually kind of almost dead, because 
my signal generator is set to one point oh no it's fine one point seven volts I forgot uh, let me turn it down a bit just a second and let me enable the load and we should see a current pulse on the yellow trace and we should see a measured value for the rise time so yeah there it is I'm just gonna stop it for a second so I don't dissipate too much power in that MOSFET so what we can see is that we have um, a very pretty looking rise time with a uh, about a 324 nanosecond um, rise time and we have the response of the VRMs of the CPU so the VRMs as they're known in the industry in the industry vol voltage regulator modules um, they're a polyphase buck converter usually I think this one's four phases so older CPU lower power um, not that much not that stringent requirements uh, it's not browning out even at a dropout of uh, like half a volt so uh, you can still see also the artifacts from the switching converter so the waveform of the switcher um, and this is basically what you'd expect as a response for the converter so we have a sharp drop when the pulse current pulse starts drawing a lot of current then it settles with a bit of overshoot I don't know exactly what this overshoot is doing there it's probably ringing with some description um, and then the uh, controller compensates but we still have a bit of voltage drop and then when we release the load the pulse the um, the controller doesn't compensate quickly enough and it actually overshoots so the overshoot is minimal but the sag under load is quite severe so let me uh, turn this thing back on and let's torture it a bit further so I'm going to mess around with uh, the pulse amplitude and you can see that we are getting a bit of rounding of the rise time of the rising edge but it still looks reasonably fine wait a second and you can see that the despite me increasing the uh, pulse width I'm sorry I'm having a back connection somewhere around here uh, despite me increasing the pulse width significantly this is almost 15 microsecond uh, 20 microseconds right now it's 18 microseconds actually um, the controller is still compensating uh, perfectly so if it were not able to supply all the current that we're asking it it would have just continuously sagged lower and lower right so I hope you enjoyed the um, nice part of the video in which I showed you a uh, real-life application so this is actually pretty bad uh, so 500 millivolts per division for channel 4 you can actually go and measure um, let's see vertical overshoot negative overshoot Let's overshoot and let's go channel two three four channel three is actually dead on this thing so uh, we have a I don't think I can figure that measurement correctly anyway um, we drop almost a volt so yeah and then it settles to around uh, 900 millivolts and then it overshoots around Two, three hundred, something like that, and then it settles back at the 1.45 volts. Um, if I move this coupling to DC again and run it, you can see that the voltage on channel four. Let's add another measurement of vertical. Um, amplitude no um,
meme on channel four. So mean on channel four is 1.35 something volts. Um, so that's the core voltage. So, and when it, when the load triggers, you can see it drops significantly. So now uh, it's around 1.3 something volts. So yeah, it's probably not gonna affect an old Athlon. So what, I'm, what I was going to say is that um, this oscilloscope, yeah, this is just terrible. So it's an older LaCroix, 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 Teledyne LaCroix. Um, it's a wave surfer, and just look at how long it takes to change a um, vertical setting. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that, it just keeps saying calibrating. Uh, I remember they were actually this bad. I used to work with a HD 4000, uh, 4096, I think, um, oscilloscope when I used to when I used to work for the Physics Research Institute here, and it was nothing like this. So they have gotten a lot better, and some coworkers of mine at a different department at work now have Lacroix, and they're great, uh, especially the eight channel models. They're really nice. What were they thinking? Like, this thing is terrible. Look at this, it's not responsive at all. It's... Like, when you turn on the measurements, you can see the refresh rate of the waveforms dropping like a brick. And this thing gets hot, so the exhausts are on either side and it gets really, really hot. And they go for thousands of euros still, I don't know why. All right, so uh, a shorter video. We tortured a poor DC-DC converter, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna try and put out another video tomorrow about something else a bit more interesting. Um, let me know if you want to see a repair or a teardown. I'm going to do a poll as well, so. Whatever uh, is preferred tomorrow at something tomorrow morning, um, I'll do and I'll upload uh, uh, later in the evening. So, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.